When looking back at the decade that was the 2000s, one thing you consistently see in nostalgia posts is the Nintendo DS and its siblings, the DS Lite and DSi. There's a reason for that. The DS family and its successor, the 3DS, are some of the most iconic pieces of tech to come from the past two decades. Chances are, if you were born between the early 90s and late 2000s, you had or knew someone who owned one of these machines. Today we'll focus on the DS family. I'll be saving the 3DS family for another video. So let's dive a little deeper into the history, life and legacy of the Nintendo DS console. First of all, let's set out the difference between the three models. The regular Nintendo DS is the oldest, being released back in 2004. It has a slightly more rounder design, a bit quirky looking when compared to what came after, but was pretty great especially for the time. It had a successful launch, with 500,000 units being sold during the first week in North America alone. Then, about 8 months later, Nintendo stated 6.5 million units had been sold worldwide. As a bonus, it was backwards compatible with games released for the Game Boy Advance, meaning it was kind of a 2-in-1. Nintendo stated the device would get around 10 hours of playtime, which is quite good to get out of a device of its size. It features two 32-bit CPUs, a main one running at 67MHz and a secondary one running at 33, as well as 4MB of RAM and 256KB of storage. It has two 3.1-inch screens, both of which are 256 by 192 pixels, giving each a resolution of 102 pixels per inch. On a small screen like this, it's not all that bad, especially for back in 2004, and putting a super high quality screen in a machine like this would have destroyed the battery life, so this is a pretty good middle ground and is completely usable today. Then in 2006, we had our second DS console, the DS Lite. The term Lite here may throw some people off, as it wasn't exactly a downgrade to the original DS, like the Nintendo Switch Lite was a more basic version of the regular Switch. This one may look a bit more familiar to some people. This time, Nintendo took the design of the original DS and made it slimmer and sleeker looking, which is why it's called the DS Lite. It gave us the iconic design we've all come to know and love. The stylus was now stored on the side of the console rather than on the back. It was claimed to have up to 19 hours of battery life, which is crazy considering the battery is not much larger than in the original DS, at an extra 100 mAh. The internals are more or less the same, slightly bigger battery, same CPU and screens, plus backwards compatibility. It was a great deal for those who hadn't already jumped on the DS wagon. Then we had the third major and final major upgrade in 2008, with the DSi and DSi XL a year later but I'll throw them in together. It looked similar to the DS Lite, but was wider than its counterpart. It had lots of upgrades, some of which, being its own dedicated store, making games that previously required a physical cartridge available to be downloaded straight to the device. The main CPU of the console was now also twice the speed as it was in the past. A camera was added, and there were four times as much RAM, now 16 megabytes, and 256 megabytes of base storage. Support for SD cards was also added up to 32GB. Along with these, there were the trade-offs. Game Boy Advance cartridges were no longer compatible, meaning backwards compatibility was more or less dead for this model. The battery life was significantly shorter than the DS Lite, roughly 5 hours shorter, giving between 9 to 14 hours, and the DSi XL gets between 13 to 17 hours, which is very impressive and easily enough for the average person. You may think that the DS that held up the best would be the DSi, but I believe that title has to go to the DS Lite, and I'm not saying that just because that's the model I've got here. It brings the iconic design, greatest battery life, and support for both DS games and GBA games. Sure, the DSi has some nice features like a camera, more powerful hardware, and an online store, but it's not really enough to make it all round the best anymore. It lost support for GBA games, making it the only DS to run just DS games, which can be played on a 3DS as well. Moving it did allow for an SD card slot and an online store, but the online store has since shut down, so that means it's since become physical games only, removing half the reason for expandable storage since your save file is stored on the game card itself. The DS Lite, however, still runs any DS game, except a couple that require a camera, and GBA games, 
But that's not all the GBA slot is used for. The slot is also how most manufacturers included accessories, such as a rumble pack, extra memory to run the web browser, plus the infamous Guitar Hero accessory. There are so many accessories you could make a whole video just on them, and people have. And since the DSi doesn't have that slot, these accessories just won't work with it, leaving just the regular DS and DS Lite to use these accessories with. Most of the accessories, however, had the DS Lite in mind, meaning some of them won't quite fit on the original DS. Most are okay, but some, like the Band Hero drum accessory, would only fit the DS Lite. But you don't necessarily need the accessories to have fun with the DS's games. And games it had! There are almost 3,500 different games available for the machine, and that's not including Game Boy Advance titles that are backwards compatible. There's something for everyone here, whether you're into sports games, classic Nintendo titles, party games, brain games, racing games, there's always something to love. Which is why it probably sold incredibly well, having about 154 million total lifetime sales across all three models. For comparison, the Nintendo Switch is currently sitting at about 130 million total sales. It was easily the best selling portable console of the 2000s. With its biggest rival, the PlayStation Portable, having 80 million worldwide sales, plus beating out some consoles like the Xbox 360, which had 85 million worldwide sales. And its console sibling, the Wii, which has just over 100 million sales. Which just proves that a console doesn't have to be the most powerful or fanciest to be successful, but that it's fun for everybody. Nintendo's consoles aren't usually targeted at a specific audience. Like the Wii, being the console for the whole family, and the Switch being advertised with games shown for both kids and adults. There are even a few M-rated games coming out for the DS, one of the most notable being GTA Chinatown Wars version for the console. The DS was for sure an interesting concept that Nintendo was very worried could easily fail, and did have a slow start, but did take off rapidly in the end. And the DS remains one of the best selling consoles of all time. The DS deserves it. It took risks, using very experimental features for the time, like the touchscreen, allowing for ways to play your favourite game titles like never before, and will remain a staple of the portable gaming world and the 2000s for years to come. Thank you for watching, and I hope you've enjoyed it and found it at least a little bit interesting. If you did, consider subscribing. We're over halfway to 100 now. Thanks again, and I'll see you all soon.